What's up, fellas? We crushed the record today. You have got to see this. All right, guys, let's see if we can get this narrator to work right for once. I basically blew my money on this software. The second I update it, I can't use it right anymore. So bear with me here. We're looking at well over a megawatt on this flame. Pretty impressive. It's about 1.2 megawatts, I think, or 1.09. But we get higher than that later in the video. So let's get a quick look at it up close before we fire this up. This is Carolina's burner. Her and Lewis have requested a custom built dual fuel burner that will switch from a liquid fuel to a gaseous fuel during the pyrolysis process of tires. So this thing was rated at one megawatt, but today I was able to smash that record easily. So let's go for a little walk here. We're gonna fire this thing up on diesel first. And we are going to transition from a liquid fuel over to a gaseous fuel. And the purpose of this is for the pyrolysis plant that um, Carolina and Lewis are running. Basically what happens was, is they heat up the container full of tires until it reaches about 450 Celsius, at which point it then begins to develop a gaseous off gas. That in electric kilns, it's just wasted. They just burn it in a flare. But uh, with this process, you're able to burn that fuel and continue the pyrolysis process using the off gases while you're still able to distill the liquids out of the fractional column. So this is a pretty impressive little unit right here. Um, able to achieve well over a megawatt for purposes of upgrading. You can see right there, that is a, about 1.1 megawatts of power. About 1,500 horsepower of energy there. Now we're going to bring it down to the specifications that you requested, which is in the 350 kilowatt range. Man, that flame is beautiful. A little bit of an imbalance there because of the shape of the T's and the plumbing, but it's good enough for what we're doing. Okay, we're now going to add some propane. In your case, it would be, you'd be adding the off gas at this point. We're now going to add a little bit more air, a little bit more fuel. You want to add air and fuel for this. And we are then going to shut down the diesel fuel. Man, that's pretty awesome. That right there is a pure propane flame, I believe. We'll know in a second when I flip the camera back around. Yeah, it looks like the diesel's off and that's just pure propane. We're burning some some ash there on the interior of the combustor. There is no air going into this right now. The design of the combustor is good enough. Let's take a look at this from a perspective vantage point here. See what we got. Now adding the propane. A little bit of air. Now we're going to dial off on the air to the diesel. Now we're going to shut the diesel off. I'm adding more propane there. It's easy to accidentally extinguish the flame, so that's why I'm kind of playing with it slowly. There is a learning curve. You want to have plenty of propane or plenty of, plenty of um, pyrolysis gas which I believe in your case is gonna be mostly hydrogen and carbon monoxide with a little bit of sulfur dioxide and all that stuff in there. So yeah, not too shabby. This is just all propane. I wanna say that's probably a well over 300 kilowatts though. It's kinda of hard to dial in a flame on gaseous fuel. You have to weigh the tank to determine these things and I don't have time for that right now but uh, that is a beautiful propane flame right there. I believe at this stage we switch back over from gaseous fuel to a liquid fuel to show how you can light this thing with this process. Actually right now we're amping up the air, I'm sorry. This is with a strong air input that enables you to burn the gas extremely efficiently. However, there may be a downside. The less yellow that flame is, the less thermal infrared radiation you're putting off. 
So doing this may not be good unless you have a flame target. A flame target is something that that flame will hit and glow red hot and emanate infrared radiation. We definitely want to incorporate a flame target inside your guys' pyrolyzer to uh, help achieve a maximum efficiency of the flame. Flame impingement is kind of a uh, catch-22 in some cases. If you're using a liquid fuel, you don't want to go with flame impingement because of a fluxing action that can take place. Me and one of my colleagues that work in Africa on the same type of plant uh, discussed this in the past. Right there, we're switching over back to diesel now. That's what we just saw. So we're gonna shut off the, the uh, propane and go back straight over to liquid fuel. Let's look at that from a perspective vantage point. See there, I've added a lot of diesel. Now we're adding some air. Now we're shutting off the propane and the propane air. And we are now back to a liquid fuel. This property of this burner would be very beneficial in the event you're trying to burn a tough to ignite fuel. Some waste oils are hard to ignite in cold weather. So this feature of this burner, uh, this is going out to the pig farmer who's been inquiring on a pig carcass incineration uh, burner. This would be good for that, for when you go to light your waste oil. I want to say that's about 360 kilowatts. Yep, I was right. And um, about four cubic foot per minute of air. A two horsepower air compressor could probably pull this off. Maybe not, that is actually a lot of air, guys. I take that back. This is two nozzles. A single nozzle can be run like that off of two horsepower. You're looking at about four horsepower of air. Man, that flame is incredible. I am so impressed with the interior turbulence of this combustor. It's working out amazing. So I definitely want to say thanks to Carolina and Lewis for inspiring this build. Um, if you guys wouldn't have asked me for this, I probably wouldn't have built something like this for years. So the coolest thing I've built yet, and I owe that to you guys. So thanks a lot for inspiring this. This thing's going to be pretty awesome. So, fellas and ladies, I want to thank everybody for all the support you guys have given this channel. This last little bit of footage is just a GoPro footage of the entire experiment. Some of you guys over there in Bolivia and Russia and a lot of them other countries like that um, seem to enjoy the entire length of these experiments. A lot of people ask if they can see the entire experiment. And uh, if you're not an American, you have an extraordinary attention span. It's baffling. Um, the people in America, the attention span is like three minutes max on a video. I've got guys in other countries that'll watch 10 minutes of video, no problem, without flinching. So some of you guys ain't gonna wanna see the rest of what's on here. It's simply the entire experiment um, shot from the Vantage Point GoPro camera. And that's just for some of my viewers who really wanna see everything. Some of you guys are trying to build this stuff and we may not have touched upon features that you're interested in. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this footage to anyone who's wanting to build this thing themselves. I'm not that type of businessman. If you can look at one of my designs and build it for yourself, then more power to you, brother. You're my kind of crowd. And I'm basically here to help out the people who don't have time to build it themselves and experiment. I can tell you right now, if you want to build this thing yourself, you're looking at about two, three weeks of jacking around till you get the right size tubing and all that stuff. It's not um, as easy as I make it look. It took me years to get to the point where I could just throw one of these things together in a couple of hours. So I have no problem with uh, helping people build their own. I'm not stingy, and I don't care that my ideas are all over the internet either. I mean, that just kind of deters competition as far as I'm concerned. I'm not worried about competition. If the Chinese steal my ideas, I'll uh, go somewhere else and do something else, you know? I'm not one of these guys who whines and cries and frets. I'm just going to go fish some better seas. Simple as that. So I'm out of here, fellas. And, uh... Man, I appreciate all the comments and stuff you guys have been giving me. The feedback that I've been getting, like, it just doesn't even sound like you guys are talking about me, man. So, maybe I'll start living up to some of this praise. I'm out of here, fellas. This day and a half ain't over yet. All right, take that back.
I am done for the day and a half. I've been working for like 30 hours. I gotta roll. I'm going to sleep, guys. I'll see you when I saw you.